This video is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. We got two other fight cards happening before Saturday, the PFL event on Thursday, and the boxing fight on Friday. And we'll be talking about the PFL fight first between French superstar, former glory kickboxing world champion, Cedric Dumbe versus Baki. This is a huge fight for the French audience and... Honestly, for the PFL in general, Baki is one of their best prospects. The guy's well-rounded, has a good skill set, could do very good things in the future. And they're throwing him right at one of their biggest stars. I mean, this is uh, a bit of a risk for both fighters here. Stylistically, Baki does have the wrestling in order to give Cedric Dumbe some problems. Dumbe has defended plenty of takedowns in his MMA career already, but he has never fought a wrestler close to the level of Baki. All right, Baki has an explosive double leg. He's a big, strong guy. He seems much bigger than Cedric Dumbe, who weighs around like 187 pounds. Baki, I would not imagine if Baki's close to 200, probably in the mid-190s. The guy's built like a mini Brock Lesnar. I mean, it looks like he came to scratch his own head. That's how muscular this guy is. And he throws punches like that too. So wrestling is definitely going to be in his favor. If he gets the fight to the ground, Dumbe can be in some trouble. I don't know his ability to get up if he gets taken to the ground. He's rarely ever had to do that. And Baki does labor some of his punches. He doesn't have the snap like Dumbe does. And when he's throwing punches, he's got low shoulders. Right? He drops his shoulder low, which exposes his chin to any potential counterpunch from Cedric Dumbe. And the problem that Baki could come across is that Cedric Dumbe naturally has a low stance. He's leaning forward, head is low, and it gives him a natural ability to draw his hips away and dig in underhooks on a potential takedown. And his best punch is the right overhand. He's excellent at throwing this as a counter. He defends, catches your hooks, and counters you with the overhand that could catch Baki over his low shoulders, knocking him out. Dumbe's got some crazy power. He could throw some really good leg kicks as well, as Baki likes to move forward and back with that bouncy rhythm, and I think Dumbe can absolutely time some of those with the low kicks, and then whenever Baki explodes with that lunging left hook that he loves to throw, I can see Dumbe slipping on the inside of it, catching it, and countering him with a hard right overhand, ultimately leading to my prediction for this fight. It's quite tough knowing that Baki can take him to the ground, and Dumbe's never really had to deal with some of this level of wrestling before, but off of what we do know, I'm probably going to go with Cedric Dumbe by a second round TKO. He so far finished every single one of his fights, and I think this is going to be another one and a good learning experience for Baki. And then we go to the boxing fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou. This is going to be very interesting. Anthony Joshua is clearly the more technical boxer of the two. He's been doing this way longer. Is an example of a good heavyweight with good fundamentals. Everything he does is very textbook. Not a lot of wasted movements or punches. Everything is met with purpose. He has an excellent jab. His 1-2 is going to be probably his biggest weapon in this fight. Knowing that Francis Ngannou always leans away for the check left hook. And Tyson Fury was also catching him with the 1-2 because of that. When he leans away from the jab, he's going to be exposed to the follow-up right straight. And this is also shown in the Stipe Miocic fight in MMA. Joshua throws his hooks in tight, not as long as Ngannou does. And Joshua's footwork is, again, very textbook, right? Nothing too crazy or flashy. And Francis Ngannou, on the other hand, is a bit of a wild card. You can see that he is trying to stick with some of the fundamentals, but he has his own flair to it. Again, his hooks are very wide. He takes off quite awkward angles for his punches. He switches from orthodox to southpaw and fights very well in either stance. This is shown in the Tyson Fury fight as well. In the orthodox stance, he had a very good check left hook whenever Fury went to the body, or Ngannou was able to avoid the one-two to the head. That's what caused that knockdown. And from the southpaw stance, he has a good ability to cut off to the outside foot and line up that left straight. But the thing is, all of these kind of techniques from a distance is going to be quite difficult to land on Anthony Joshua just because of how good Joshua's defense is, right? Joshua usually exposes himself when he's in close, kind of brawling with you, and he will do that. He's done it even in some of his most recent fights. Any moment he starts brawling with Nganu is a moment he can get knocked out because he drops his hands, he keeps his head up tall, and Ngannou's got the power advantage, and he has the chin. Any time they exchange like that, I can see Ngannou knocking him out. It could be in the first round or the last round. And that leads to my prediction for this fight. I'm going to go with Anthony Joshua. But because Ngannou could knock him out in any one of those moments, in a lot of his fights, Joshua does brawl. That gives Ngannou way too many opportunities to win this fight. And also when we talk about the clinch, Ngannou seems to be ahead of a lot of these boxers with his Muay Thai plum, with his bicep control. He's going to be physically stronger than Joshua. He might have close to 30 pounds on him unless Joshua upped his weight and got bigger for this fight. And in the clinch, Ngannou's going to have some powerful, dirty boxing. But I am going to go with Anthony Joshua winning this by a decision. I think at the end of the day, the 1-2 is going to be a bit troublesome for Ngannou, unless he fixed it. I mean, this guy might just keep getting better as a boxer. He only had one boxing fight against the best in the world, and he looked really good in that. So I'm very curious to see how much better he has gotten from that experience, and we have no idea. 
right? We have absolutely no idea how good Ngannou might look in this fight. He might be a totally different level of a boxer in this fight with Joshua, and I cannot wait to see it. But off of what we do know, I think Joshua is going to have a lot of success with the one-two, and specifically just moving with the jab, and he has to move. He can't be plotting like he is sometimes. He does not want Ngannou right in front of him, and Ngannou will tank a lot of his shots in order to get in close range. Ring generalship is going to be a huge thing for Joshua to not get stuck on the ropes too, because anytime he's stuck on the ropes, he's going to have to resort to clinching. And every time that happens, he's going to be at a disadvantage. So there are a lot of opportunities for Angano to win this. But I do think the basics from Joshua, specifically with that one-two, might win him this fight. And if you guys want to go and capitalize on these odds, that minus 550 on Anthony Joshua, the plus 325 for Francis Angano, make sure to go to mybookie.ag. And they also got all the other boxing fights on this as well. They don't have the Cedric Dumbe and Baki fight, but I don't agree with the minus 550. I think Ngannou has a much better chance than they're giving him. It is heavyweight boxing at the end of the day, and Ngannou is not a bad boxer for this weight class, and he has the kind of power to knock anybody out. I'm personally not putting anything on Joshua because he's just way too big of a favorite. If he was closer to like a minus 200 or minus 250 or something, then yeah, I would definitely put something on him. But because of how big of an underdog Ngannou is, I might put something on him instead. And whoever you guys want to bet on, make sure to use my bookie's deposit bonus, where they'll double your first deposit all the way up to $1,000. In order to activate this, use the promo code WEASEL, that's W-E-A-S-L-E, to take advantage of my bookie sign-up offer. You could do a bunch of other stuff as well. You don't just have to bet on fights. You know, There's a ton of different things on my bookie as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions. And if you did, make sure to give this a thumbs up. If you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.